My name is Jack Brink, and I'm the curator of archaeology at the Royal Albert Museum in Edmonton. And I've been working here at Writing on Stone for almost 40 years now, working on archaeology and studying the rock art here. And millions and millions of buffalo used to roam the plains here before they were almost exterminated. And so the, the plains people found ways to kill them in mass numbers. And even while they were doing that, they really never endangered the population because there were so many buffalo uh, that they would never run out really in the traditional ways of hunting them. And the most uh, famous of those techniques, what's called the buffalo jump. And the buffalo jump was not really a jump. It's a, kind of a bad name because the buffalo didn't jump over a cliff. They were pushed by the animals that were following behind them as they ran in a great stampede towards the cliffs. And then you had to move them. And to do that, the native people not only used themselves, but they manipulated the landscape. They would build these stone lines in a V-shape like this that would come to an apex right at the buffalo cliff. And it's these cliffs at the edge of the river that form the actual buffalo jump. In some cases, there's a sheer drop. In many cases, it's actually just a very steep slope. All the organic material that comes from many, many, many dead buffalo that happened over many different events. And the animals decay in the ground and, and the parts of them rot. And that's partly why this is so green right here. It's because this is a buffalo jump. And we're seeing the results of that even hundreds of years later. The First Nations that lived in the area of writing on stone uh, really subsisted on the bison almost entirely for their existence. It's hard to exaggerate how important that one animal was. It's been called uh, kind of a cliche, uh, a walking supermarket, the bison to the plains people. And it's true though, uh, the supermarket had all their food, their clothing, the tools were made from bones, uh, the horns were used to make scoops. From the tail, they would make uh, fly swatters to flot swies. I mean, they, they literally used everything from the animal. Even the, the rounding up and, and driving them was an amazing task, but now an even bigger task lies ahead because they have this enormous amount of meat and fat and hide and blood and stomach contents and everything to deal with. And they had to do this quickly or else the spoils would decay in the sun and the, and the, the wind. So they had a very short period of time, perhaps a couple of days, to go along and open up all these animals, to gut them, to skin them, to, to strip the meat. And so many hundreds of people must have been involved in this. It would have been probably around the clock, 24 hour a day, people just keep working, you sleep, you eat, you go back to work for again. It would be an amazing thing. Nothing would produce as much food in a single moment as a buffalo jump. So in four million years of human evolution all over the world, nobody except the Plains native people developed a more profitable way of getting food in a single moment than they did with a buffalo jump. That's really a remarkable thing 